morning and welcome to worship on this second Sunday of Advent here at St. Peter's Highland United Church of Christ, where whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We welcome you into this time of celebration and anticipation as we prepare for the coming birth of Christ. And so as we do so, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we hear the playing of this morning's prelude. me now in our responsive call to worship. Leap for joy. Christ is coming. Christ Christ comes comes into into our lives. Rejoice and praise. God's promises reign. Christ Christ comes comes into into our lives. Sing songs of old. Proclaim ancient truths. Christ Christ comes comes into into our our lives. Let us continue this celebration of Christ's coming by joining our quartet in this morning's hymn.
invite you to join with us now in our unison prayer of confession. Loving, Loving God, God, even, even in, in the midst of this season of goodwill, there, there is much to confess. In spite of holiday cheer, stress, and anxiety rule our lives. We miss the reason for the season. We fail to think about your reordered world, a world where the lowly are lifted up and the hungry are filled with good things. Help us adjust our Christmas priorities that we might join with you, O God, in preparing a world that welcomes the one who brings us peace. Amen. Friends, the ancient promises of God are fulfilled. God does not forget us. God's mercy extends from generation to generation. Let our souls rejoice in the forgiving love of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, it's time once again to light the, our Advent candle and here to light our second Advent candle this year are Betty Harmon, Sue Ann Berge, and Debbie Herkey. challenged by hope, just like the people of the Old Testament. Today we light the second candle, which is for peace. The prophets always remind us that peace and justice are connected. We can't expect to be at peace in the world when things are not judged fairly and when people are oppressed while others gain from their oppression. This is a difficult time in our world. Let's pause for a moment and imagine what it would be like if peace were plunked down on our planet right now. What changes can you envision? Now ask yourself, are any of these changes something in which you could take part? What would your role be? Let us pray together. Jesus, heal our world with peace and, and true peace that comes from your presence. Help us to take an active role in being people of peace who are working for justice. Guide us to live and move in the world as peaceful people, furthering unity instead of our division and striving to end oppression. As the light grows brighter around this Advent wreath, so make our hearts brighter with faith and hope. Encourage us with your love as we prepare for the coming of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Welcome into this morning's children's sermon. You know, I'm, I'm here in the church, uh, sitting here on the step, uh, where when we're worshiping in person, we always gather for this time of worship. And 
I'm really missing you guys. I miss being able to sit up here with you and share stories and tell jokes and um, all the all the stuff that we do to share God's word with each other. And you know, that's just the way things are right now. We can't be together in person. Um, we're we're separating ourselves from each other to uh, keep ourselves safe, but also to keep each other safe. And, and that's what we need to do right now. And, but it's, it's hard, right? I mean, all of those things that have been going on this year, um, uh, especially around the isolation around this virus, are really hard. And I know they're hard for you guys. They're hard for me. And I've been trying to think of a way to talk about that. And it, it came to mind this week that, you know, our, our theme for worship on this Advent Sunday is is peace, right? We, we lit the, the peace Advent candle a few minutes ago. Um, you're going to hear about peace in the scripture reading that we're going to have in a few minutes, in the sermon, uh, in some of the prayers. That's our theme for today. And we, we're talking about the peace that Jesus brings. And I know sometimes that can be hard to think about because, you know, if, for, for most of us, for me most of the time, uh, when someone sa- talks about peace, what do you think of? Probably like the absence of, of war, the absence of, of fighting, having a peace treaty. Uh, those kinds of things are the way that we think about peace. And, and while we want Jesus to bring that sort of peace to us <clears throat> as well, um, I think if we if we stop to think about it, the peace that Jesus brings us uh, can be much closer to home than just bringing an end to war and to violence and so forth. And so I wanted to talk about that, especially in conjunction with with all the other stuff going going around. And and so uh, I've got I've got a rope with me today, and and it makes me think about makes me think about how I feel inside sometimes, and 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 all of this worry about uh, the virus and being separated and not being able to be together in church and in school, it kind of makes me feel like this inside sometimes, like my insides are kind of tight and getting knotted up and, and, and that's upsetting, right? And it, it wears on us after a while. And it's been, you know, seven, eight months now that we've been locked down like this and that's hard to maintain. And that'll make you feel like this on the inside. But even lately, things have been added to it. Like, for example, Thanksgiving a couple weeks ago. I don't know about you. Um, we weren't able to gather with family in the way that we normally do. And so that adds to all of this. Christmas is coming up in a few weeks, and it's going to be very different for many of us. And there's going to be people that we like to be with that, that aren't there. And so all of that stuff, maybe you're not able to be in school. Or maybe if you are in school, you're not able to do the things that you like to normally do or some of your friends are missing. All of that stuff contributes and it tightens up and it tightens up and it gets to that point where we feel like this on the inside. Uh, uh, That's a tight, tight knot. And that's hard to keep going like that. It's not good for us. You know, that's why we don't always feel well. And so the thing I want to think about is when we When we talk about Jesus bringing peace, when we ask Jesus to come in and bring us peace, we're talking a lot about inner peace, making us feel peaceful. And so part of that, especially now in the midst of all of these challenges, is that we have to get to the point where we trust Jesus. We trust that the things that he teaches us and the things that he tells us are more important than than anything else. They're more important than what's going on around us. They're more important than the virus. They're more important than than our politics. They're more important than things going on at school. All of those things that when we finally put all of our faith and trust in Jesus, that that's what we need to focus on. All of this tension, all of this nodding in us goes away. And that is the kind of peace that Jesus can bring us. Now, having that trust, it's hard to do. I'm not always very good at it either. 
I let things bother me and get me worried too. But what we have to do is come back to our understanding that Jesus is the focus of everything that we should be doing. And so he, he teaches his disciples, don't worry, just pay attention to me. So that's the challenge, but it's also the opportunity we have. We're going to celebrate Christmas in a couple of weeks. It's going to be different, but it's still going to be about Jesus. And, and one of the things that Jesus brings to us is peace. So I want you to think about that this week and in the coming weeks. Think about it if you listen to the sermon in a few minutes. But that's the kind of peace that we need. Why don't we have a short prayer? God, thank you. Thank you so much for the gift of Jesus. And thank you for the gift of peace that he brings to each one of us. Amen. Well, hey, hang in there. I'm right there with you. We'll get through this together and we'll be back here really soon. I'll see you next week. As we come now to our time of prayer this Sunday morning, I invite you to relax, to find a comfortable position to be in, to center yourself, to quiet your mind and your spirit and find that place of connectiveness with the spirit within you. As we do so, let's take a moment of silence to quiet our minds and prepare our spirits for this morning's prayer. Faithful one, we call upon you asking for your provision of peace. Our world is hurting now. There's conflict and pain on so many fronts. Help to heal us with the gift of your deep peace. Peacemaking God, we turn to you in prayer. All around us are stories of destruction, of despair, of death, and of darkness. These days seem long in our quest to be offering news of your everlasting peace. Come now, Advent God, and create a way in us. Be in our midst as we seek respite from the warring factions of politics, of hate, of fear, of virus. We know it's not supposed to feel so hard, so painful. Usher us towards the path where you will meet us in unexpected encounters as we covenant together again to be speakers of peace, we pray. Open our hearts and quiet our minds so that we might receive your comfort. When we feel uncertain, remind us that our true security is found within you. Awaken our awareness for others, that we might partner in peacemaking with you. It is with that awareness of others that we share with you now the deepest longings and fears of our hearts in this time of quiet meditation. For all of our prayers this morning, we ask your blessing and mercy, and we ask this and all things in the name of the one of peace, Jesus the Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We come today to joyfully give back some of the gifts that God has already given to us in, in our tithes and in our offerings. And so as we prepare to do so, 
Just a reminder that you're able to donate online using the link that appears at the bottom of the screen. Uh, you may also send in your gifts and offerings to the church. We greatly appreciate all of those gifts that we continue to receive, and we appreciate your faithfulness to the life and ministry of this congregation. We do also remember those who have been impacted negatively by this virus and by the circumstances that surround it. Um, we're not asking for money that you don't have. So just give as you're able and give joyfully to God. Friends, if the world is to be turned upside down, we need to participate in that transformation. And our offerings this morning will enable the church to be faithful to the call of transformation and to the vision of liberation and peace. Through these offerings, we can be beacons of light when the world grows dark. We can reach out, offering a place to make sense of what is happening in the world around us. We can participate in the power of love and the power of peace, the power that can truly turn this world upside down. Let us give joyfully now of our offer. Let us join together in giving thanks in our prayer of dedication. We offer you, O God, not what we have left over after our Christmas spending. We offer our whole selves and our resources for the work of transforming our world. May what we offer make a difference, not only in our community and the world, but, but in, in our, our church, church and, and in, in ourselves. ourselves. Amen. A reading from the prophet Micah. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, you who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall live secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace.
I have to admit that when this whole coronavirus lockdown started, I had a very different mindset about it. Initially, I welcomed the change that the lockdown brought. I thought it'd be fun. I thought it'd be a relaxing way to spend a few weeks working from home. It would lighten the busy workload that I'd been experiencing during Lent. It would provide for some peaceful time with my family. It, it would be perhaps like an ex extended snow day, a nice change of pace for a few weeks while everything else just shut down for a little while. Well, now, some nine months later, needless to say, I don't have the same outlook on things. And I certainly have struggled to find that sense of peace for so much of this time. And with the added dimension of so many people getting sick and so many people dying of this virus, it's obviously so much more than just a temporary distraction. In the meantime, our surroundings have been anything but peaceful. Whether it was the summer and fall of intensive campaigning for this presidential election, or the division about the ways in which we are fighting and trying to contain the spread of this virus, there have been few moments of peace since March. And so lighting the peace candle in our Advent wreath today in worship might seem to be a bit of a stretch for many of us at this point of 2020. And all of this is why I'm very thankful that the suggested scripture for today's service and our unexpected gift series comes from Micah. It's a familiar passage, often heard this time of year, usually because Micah makes reference to Bethlehem as being where a special ruler of Israel will emerge. And of course, we see this as a prophecy of the coming Messiah, and so do a number of New Testament writers. But the thing that I treasure today about this passage from Micah is not so much the prophetical expression of it, but rather the reminder that peace can be elusive and plentiful all at the same time. Let me explain. The world that Micah lived in was certainly a world without peace. Micah is writing in the midst of constant threats from warring factions. His world was insecure. Peace would have been elusive, and those with power were constantly abusing their position on the backs of those that were considered to be less than. Even though the book of Micah is very short, it's only five or six pages long in your Bible, it's full of teachings about justice and equity. Micah cries out to God about the injustices that seem to inundate his community. Micah wants peace in his time, and yet everywhere he turns, all he finds is war and violence and injustice. So that's the backdrop for this text. And yet Micah asserts that there will be one who will come and bring a lasting peace. And not only that, but the little insignificant backwater town of Bethlehem will be the center of this newly ushered in realm of God's peace and justice. What an unexpected gift in an unexpected location. Ann Stewart writes that Micah calls us to see God's faithfulness in surprising ways, to look where we might not expect. Micah's oracle serves as a reminder that the promise of God's covenant is certain, yet the expression of its fulfillment is not always predictable. One of the things that Micah's prophecy reminds reminds me of is that Jesus is the one who will bring peace. But we talked last week about one of the ironic beauties of Advent, that we are awaiting the birth of a child that's already been born. That P 
peace of Jesus that we're waiting for, that peace that we are anticipating with all of our hearts, that peace that we look forward to so much is, in fact, already a reality. So even in the despair that we might be experiencing during this Christmas season in 2020, and as much as we would really like for Jesus just to show up later this month and initiate his new realm of peace and wholeness, well, we need to remember that that potential for peace is already here today among us. And so I've been thinking this week about the work that it takes to see God's faithfulness and, yes, God's peace in surprising sorts of ways all around us. And in times like these, I'll admit that can be a tall task. But the reminder for us today is that peace is one of those unexpected gifts for us this Christmas. Unexpected because we're not sure that we can find it anywhere. Unexpected because the gift of peace is already inside every one of us. You see, Jesus may have been the one of peace, but peace did not just suddenly appear after his birth. Just look at the stories of his life and his teachings. There's not always a lot of peace in those stories, is there? But peace is part of our DNA, if you will, as children of God. And as such, wherever we go, there is peace because we bring it with us. It comes from God, but it is expressed through our actions and our behaviors. And so all of those prayers for peace that we offer today and every other day, those prayers are simply calls to ourselves to allow the peace of God to show in our lives. So the unexpected gift that we celebrate today is us. We are the source of peace that we so often are seeking. My challenge to you this week is to think about the ways that you can bring peace to the world this holiday season. Not world peace, although if you can figure that out, go for it. But I'm talking about bringing peace to your household, to your workplace, your neighborhood, to the community in which we live, a little bit can go a long way. After all, Jesus didn't accomplish world peace in his lifetime either. So I don't think that's God's expectations of us. But if we start with peace within ourselves, there's no limit to what a difference that can make. As Desmond Tutu once wrote, do your little bit of good where you are. It's those little bits of good put together that overwhelm the world. And that, my friends, would certainly be an unexpected gift in this year or any year. Thanks be to God. Amen.
friends, the prophets foretold it. The desert burst into bloom. Angelic messengers delivered great news. A priest lost his voice, and a young woman found hers. In this season of Advent, the scriptures revive these old stories and bring to us new understandings. In the face of critics and skeptics, our faith cries out, resilient, like a baby crying from the manger bed. From that Bethlehem beginning, Jesus, baptized in the Jordan, spent his life serving others that all might know the compassionate care of a loving God. And so today Jesus serves us yet again as he has prepared for us this table to which we are all invited to partake. And as we come to this table, we do so in remembrance, remembering that on the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus was at supper with his disciples when he took the bread and he gave thanks for it and he broke it and shared it with them, saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way that evening after supper, Jesus took the cup and once again he gave thanks for it. And once again he shared it among his disciples, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so today as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we remember Christ's death, we celebrate Christ's resurrection, and we look forward to Christ's return in glory at the end of all time. Let us pray. God of justice and bounty, in your new day, the world is filled with good things. Bless these gifts of bread and wine, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, that they may nourish us as we await your coming. In the name of Christ, who lived and died so that we might live. Amen. Friends, this is the body of Christ, broken for you. Take and eat and be thankful. This is the lifeblood of Jesus poured out for you. Take and drink and be thankful. Let us give thanks together with our unison prayer of thanksgiving. We thank, thank you, you, God. God for inviting, inviting us, us to share this sacred meal in the fellowship of this community. Thank you for nourishing us in body and spirit, bread and drink, silence and song. Send us forth this Advent to grow in patience and attention, bursting with anticipation for your peace in our world. Grow in us seeds and shoots of hope as we wait for God to draw near in our Savior Jesus, in whose name we humbly pray. Amen. And now, friends, go in hope, go in peace, go in joy, and go in love for the one who brings hope and peace and joy and love to us goes with you. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Thank you.